and get the this webinar kicked off. Uh, so this is the What's New in Cypress 12 webinar. Um, before we get started, I'll just share some kind of housekeeping items. So today's what event will be recorded. Uh, we will share it via email uh, after the event. So you in your inbox uh, shortly uh, when, we, when we close out. Uh, if you have any questions, there is a Q&A panel and we've got some amazing Cypress team members that can help respond to you uh, on, on chat. You can also join us on Discord to continue the conversation or if you have any you know, real specific questions uh, for your setup, that's a, that's a great place to get help from the community and from Cypress employees. Um, and yeah, if you uh, obviously you signed up for this event, so we're very happy to have you here. But to join future events, you can uh, stay up to date on those on our community page. All right, so let's meet the team. My name is Jess. I am a product marketer at Cypress, uh, and I'll be uh, hosting today. So uh, as a product marketer, I oversee marketing for our open source app, uh, including go-to-market strategy for new product launches, uh, partnering with other teams on research initiatives, and then just helping to tell the story of our products overall. And I've been at Cyprus, uh, it's almost my one year anniversary, hooray. <laughs> um, and yeah, I'll pass it off to, to, to Eli to introduce himself. Hi everybody, my name is Eli and I am the head of developer ecosystem over here at Cyprus and excited to be here today talking to you about Cyprus 12. All right, and Abram. Hi, I'm Abram. I'm a senior customer success manager here at Cypress with a background in full stack development. And yeah, I'm just really happy to be talking about the new stuff in Cypress 12. So let's get it going. Ah. Fabulous. And in the chat, we've got our lovely Sean Harris, lovely Ronald Williams. Uh, they will be helping answer questions and uh, yeah, just interacting with you in chat. So say, say hi to those folks. Um, and without further ado, we'll get started. Um, so today we are running through our Cypress 12 release. We'll give you an overview of all of the exciting features packed into that. Uh, we'll also provide a demo of the features courtesy of Eli, and we'll make sure to leave some time for Q&A at the end. Um, all right, so Cypress 12, hooray. <laughs> uh, what is Cypress 12? Uh, Cypress 12 was our latest major release. Uh, and this was uh, packed with several features that were kind of longstanding requests from our community. And they included a, a, a resolution for detached DOM errors and also uh, helping solve like cross origin or multi-domain kind of use cases, which involved uh, making sure that that functionality went GA, uh, the GA of sessions, and then also some changes to our test isolation kind of policies. So lots and lots and lots packed into that release. And since it might have been easy to uh, miss everything that's changed, we wanted to go through this session with you all and review. Um, and this release went out last December. So uh, I will be posting links throughout the session in the chat. Uh, I'll start out with a couple links here. Uh, if you don't open any of the other links, I'll send you open these ones. <laughs> this is the link to our launch blog post and then also our migration guide for just the full list of changes in Cypress 12. Um, and they will kind of contain all of the other links throughout the presentation, but I'll, I'll keep sending those as well. All right, so to get us kicked off, I'll uh, open it up to Abram to talk about the patch DOM. Okay, so as some of you folks may be aware, detached DOM issues were one of those things that people were really hoping for to get something better than what we had. Uh, detached DOM being straight up where you are acting on some element of the DOM and that the page re-renders or that part of the DOM is swapped out and suddenly your subject is no longer attached to the page anymore. And so Cypress would come up with an error like the one we see here. The example that we see on screen is just a form. And once you select an option, it submits it and that causes the page to re-render, cause the page to refresh. And so suddenly, even though you've gone, done your sci.get, uh, the thing that you were holding is no longer there. And that's why we see the error message there timed out after four seconds. Side up select failed because this element is detached from DOM. So how did we fix this? How have people historically worked around it? They've done patterns where you use weights to allow the page to settle before continuing, having to manually reacquire uh, whatever it is you're working on. If we flip to the next. So in Cypress 12, uh, we redefined how uh, we categorize 
uh, Cypress commands. Uh, basically, a query is when you are looking for an element, uh, something like sci.get, and commands are when you are acting on elements. So a sci dot, uh, so when you're doing like a dot click or a dot select, something like that. And how does this add up to a solution? Let's see the next. So if you look at the first example there where you'd have a chain of queries and then it ends in a command, that will now never have a detached from DOM error because queries can be rerun. Basically, if at any point Cypress loses the subject that you're acting on, the element becomes attached from DOM, it will retry all of those queries leading up to that point to reacquire the element that we're trying to act on and then execute that last command. However, uh, you still can do stuff where you chain multiple commands together, like we saw before with a dot .select, dot .select. That is still vulnerable to detached from DOM errors, but even if you do that, we now give you a much more detailed error message showing exactly where the breakdown occurred. And so you can then go adjust your test to, uh, to kind of mitigate that. So obviously the pattern here that we are recommending to take full advantage of this big update is just don't chain together commands if you can. If you need to do multiple commands, uh, reacquire your, your element. So do a sci.get.click, and then instead of chaining another dot .click onto that, just do another sci.get. You can use aliases for that to keep it simple, um, but this way you'll never run into an attach from DOM error ever again. Ever again, amazing. Thank you, Abram. Um, and yeah, those errors are frustrating, so we're excited to uh, banish them for good. Uh, I, I'm pasting in some links to some resources here. We have a reliability guide that our engineer wrote up uh, who, who built this feature about yeah how and when uh, we retry commands and assertions if you want to double click or, or just have something to reference. Um, and then also uh, you can reference our docs for more information about like what a custom query is and how to use it. All right. With that, Eli, take it away. Awesome. Well, as excited as I am about fixing the detached DOM problem that has been in problem with Cypress for quite a bit and how we're reclassifying all of our commands uh, to help you better understand about them, I am super excited about Sci.Origin because Sci.Origin goes and fixes one of the most outstanding issues that we've had with Cypress, having the ability to um, go to a different domain and run some Cypress commands and then come back to your website within the same test. Let's go to the next slide. So uh, like I said, this, is, this has been a longstanding problem and this is kind of the example that we would happen. Now authentication is like one of the uh, like biggest scenarios that you would run into with this. And so this first thing is shown, it's like, hey, you're visiting your, your local application, you're clicking your login button Login button redirects to some type of third-party authentication site. Then you try to run a Cypress command, like type a username and password into the box. Previously, this wouldn't work. And this is because of cross-site origin policies. The way that Cypress is architected is that it runs inside of your, um, your application. So it's restricted to all the same type of security restrictions that your own code is. But we we took some time. We really thought about this problem. How could we solve it? And uh, we put it together. Let's uh, go to the next slide. And so th this is how it works. So you start with your main origin, starting on whatever you're visiting first. And then you do some type of action that's going to take you to a new domain. And at this particular time, what you're going to do is run a site.origin command and specify the new domain that you're going to. And we build what we call a spec bridge. And the spec bridge kind of loads up a new iframe inside of the Cypress test runner for you to run commands against the new one. And then it's able to communicate back to the original spec bridge or to the original application as well when it's all done. So it's, it's a lot of wizardry that's put into place. We have a really good blog post that goes into the details about like the um, what we had to do technically to get this to work. And so uh, I think we'll probably be posting a link to that pretty soon, but go ahead and check that out. And next slide. And then also very um, 
um, related to um, site origin is sessions and sessions allow you to actually take an existing session and kind of like serialize it and then restore it at the beginning of the new test. And this is going to take everything that is in local storage, session storage, all of your cookies, persist it and then reload it. And the reason why you might want to do so is so that you don't have to go through a particular scenario. Uh, let's go back to the authentication again. Um, so you don't have to like re-log into the app at the beginning of each test because by default, all that um, uh, all that session storage, local storage, cookies, those are all wiped at the beginning of each test. And so by using site.sessions, uh, you can persist it and restore it, which will save you a lot of time going through the app. Next slide. Okay, and so this is kind of going th um, through some, some of the stuff I just said, showing the example workaround uh, to get around it. People were kind of crafty in uh, doing it. Um, but now let's take a look at the next slide. Okay, and I'll go ahead and do a quick demo showing both of these. So let me grab a screen sharing here real quick. Okay, and do we see my login button? I think we do. Yes. Okay. All right, so th this is a, just a real sample or a quick example application that is going to show the scenario. Uh, what we have here is an application that's hooked up to Auth0 for authentication. So what I'll do is I'll click the login button here. And what happens is I actually get redirected. If you look up here in my address bar, I'm being redirected to another domain name because I'm using third-party authentication, which is really a good practice when you're putting together applications. But it's using third-party authentication. It's going to off zero. Um, I got my credential, credentials entered and I'll go ahead and hit continue. And you can see that I'm logged in. Now let's see what it's like to run or to write some Cypress tests that uh, um, is going to validate the scenario. All right, so here is the application. I'm gonna come up here into the end-to-end -end tests and create a new spec file. And in here, I'll just write up the first test. Um, and this is just saying like, hey, there should be a login button. And let's go ahead and run that real quick. I'll fire up Cypress. Go to end, end testing and start uh, end, end testing in Chrome. And I'll select the home spec. Okay, so we got our login button. Now let's actually test authenticate with it. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm going to that um, back here. Uh, we'll do some stuff to do some login code and then to verify that we're actually logged in, we're gonna make sure that we have the logout button. So I'll take this out and put in the login code. And so this is what we're doing. We're clicking the login button, then we're gonna find on um, the username and password box, type in our credentials into them and then click the continue button. And then we expect to come back to our page here. And you can see it's trying to run. And this is what you would typically run up against with the cross origin problem. And so the it's telling you here, uh, we give you actually a, a lot better error messaging in Cypress 12 when you run into this issue. And it's like, hey, you can try using site.origin to wrap the commands and this will likely fix the issue. And uh, up above right here, it's telling you what the actual issue is. It's like the command expected to run against the origin that we started off on, but the app was now on a new origin. And so let's see what side of origin looks like in practice. Okay, so we have, um, we'll, we'll make a call to Cy.Origin, which is a new API that came out of ex experimental status in Cypress 12, and it's now available for um, general availability. But what we do is we give it the new domain that we want to run commands on. And this is what's going to set up that new spec bridge and load the application up in a new iframe so we can communicate with it. And then I'm going to take this login code down below and move it up into here. Now, all this code in this, uh, arrow function 
that I have here is going to run on the new origin. And then when it redirects back, we can continue testing on our actual application. And there it goes. And I'm not too sure why it dropped me off at the off zero screen there, but let me run it again just in case you missed it. So that's great. Now let's drop in a few more tests here to like verify that our little uh, user profile section here is showing up properly. So we're gonna make sure that the avatar shows up, that the user's name is showing up properly and the user's email is showing up properly. Now, one thing that I need to do is to make sure because of test isolation, e each one of these tests isn't going to have it. So I need to make sure that I'm logging in for each of these tests. And to do so, I'm gonna move the login code up into a before each block. Okay, so now before each of these tests, we're going to run this login code. All right, so th that uh, worked great. It did what we expected it to do and our tests are all passing, but you might've noticed that like for each one of those tests, we had to go through and log in each time to get to the user profile state. And that is where we're going to bring in SIDOT session. SIDOT session was specifically designed to help with this scenario. And so SIDOT session will basically cache um, these values. And the way that we'll run it is we'll say SI.session. And the first value that we give it here is going to be a key. And since we're dealing with authentication and users, we kind of want to like base the key off of the user. So we'll use the user's name. So we'll just say like user test at test.com. And then the second parameter will be the function that will run when there's currently nothing in the cache or for some reason the cache isn't valid anymore. So I'll move all this up here. And then a best practice, what you wanna do um, when you're, especially when you're using origin and you're coming back to your domain name is you kinda of wanna um, have the application wait for a second to make sure that all of your session data is available before you actually store it into cache. Um, so like I said, session's gonna take everything that's in local storage, session storage and cookies, and then store it away. We wanna make sure those values are actually written to before we return from this function first. And a good way to do that is to kind of like validate something in your, your UI that's going to um, be the state that you expect it to be in. And so we're gonna also use this uh, logout button. Um, so when this logout button appears, we know that everything is ready to be saved. And so we'll wait for, we'll call this logout button we know that everything's good. This function will return and then Sci.Session will persist that session. And then Sci.Session also uses test isolation, which we'll be talking about more here in a few minutes. But because of that, we wanna make sure that inside of a particular session, we're visiting the URL that we wanna to go to. But for our testing purposes for this spec, we wanna also like go here because the Sci.Session is gonna leave us at a blank page when it's done. Oh, that is the browser. Let's stop and start it again so we can see it run. Okay, so we can see that now all, all the sessions uh, were used in a cache session and not having to log in each time. And this significantly reduced the amount of time that it took our tests to run. We can come up here into a session and we can see that the session was restored. And if for some reason during our testing, we wanted to clear all sessions, we can click this button and you'll see that the session is not cleared. We have to log in again and each subsequent test is going to run. And it's also good to point out that sessions are based on each spec. And so this particular spec by default isn't going to share a session with another spec. So even if I come back here to the spec list and hit home again, that session is now gone. It's going to have to recreate it. 
Um, this is something that you can override via config. Um, so check out the docs on Session if you wish to do so. But I think it kind of makes a lot of sense to reuse this particular session, especially for um, authentication purposes between specs. That way each individual spec doesn't need to re log back in again. All right, real quick, um, I wanna show one more thing and that is that we have this code here. Um, let's add this to a custom Cypress login command so that we can use um, this login code in other specs as well. So I'll come over here to the commands file and I'll paste in, not that snippet, but the snippet. So I'm gonna add a custom Cypress login command. It's gonna take in the username and password and I'm just going to take this code directly from the before each and paste it into here. And so we're going to be taking in the username and password. So instead of hard coding these values, we're going to um, use the variables that are coming in. I'll go ahead and replace these with the values. And this, um, this brings up a, a gotcha that you need to look out for when you're using um, Origin is that this username and this password it actually aren't available to this origin command because what happens underneath the hood is that we take this function and we serialize it up and we pass it off to the new domain to be evaled in that particular domain. And so the username and password is not going to exist over there. Um, also, any like requires that you do inside of your code aren't going to exist in on the new domain either. And so we also have a safer start require command for some reason if you have to import something to do in your testing. So make sure you look out for that when you're doing that. However, we can pass values to the node um, to the node to the new domain as well. And the way that we do that is um, the second parameter here is the options and we could pass in an args argument. And so we'll pass in the username and password. And then this args argument gets passed into the callback function that gets ran on the new domain. Pass it over here. And then in this code, now we have a new site.login command that we can use from any of our tests. And we'll watch this run and it runs just like we expect it should. Great. All right. Let's uh, switch back over to the slide. I'll give up sharing here. All right. Thank you, Eli. Awesome demo and big virtual kudos to Eli. Uh, even, even sick, he's giving amazing demos <laughs> of, of the features and uh, really really helpful um, to, to, to see all that in action. So we've got one more slide here covering some of the resources that you mentioned. I'll, I'll go ahead and paste those in, but you wanna speak to any of these best practices specifically as well? Yep, I mean, so uh, best practices for site.origin, uh, make sure that you're calling site.origin um, when you go to, uh, like when your application redirects to the new site, like any um, API calls that you wanna make against the new site, make sure those are in site.origin. Um, like I just demonstrated with serialization, make sure that any values that you want access to inside of the site.origin call, you're either passing in via the args argument, or if you're importing any resources like a through uh, import or require statements, use the Cypress start require API to do so. Um, and yeah, and that goes to that dependencies. Next slide. Uh, all right, amazing. Um, I think that's it for this section here, posting in those links. So this first one uh, is a blog post that Eli mentioned earlier about uh, our, our engineering team wrote a deep dive on like how the spec bridge works. So if you're really interested in double clicking into the details there, that's really helpful. Uh, and then also a link to uh, the origin commands just to, uh, for, for reference and to learn more. All right. And as folks are saying in the chat, yes, this was an experimental feature. It's been available for a little bit now, but uh, just as an experiment, which meant you have to like opt in. And uh, now these features are GA and you know ready for production level kind of uses. So 
off to the next slide. Oh yeah, this is a resources and best practices for sessions. You want to speak through this, Eli? Um, yeah, so multiple sessions, you want to make sure um, that you're not accidentally overriding a session. So pay particular attention to those caching keys that you're using, make sure they're specific. Like in our example, we use the username to make sure that we were caching it for that particular user. Uh, you don't want to accidentally like override a session. Um, that caching option, that this is what I was talking about, so that you can reuse it across multiple spec files. Um, so it's in the options, the parameters called cache across specs equals true. When you enable this, it'll make sure that the session's available um, for your entire test suite. And then also um, because of test isolation and site.session uses test isolation, it's going to leave you at a blank page when site.session finishes running. So make sure that you call site.visit again after site.session so you're, you have something to test against. All right, awesome. Uh, paste it in the link too for the sessions command, uh, just docs there for, for more information. But been referencing test isolation. Let's uh, let's dig into that a little bit more since that was a big change in Cypress 12. Uh, Abram, take it away. Yeah, so um, that's a great lead in there because test isolation and uh, site session go hand in hand. Uh, from some of the folks in the chat who are talking about, yeah, you could use it uh, in Cypress 11 with the experimental flag, turning on that flag so you could use session also turned on test isolation. And we're gonna talk a little bit about why uh, test isolation is such a big deal. Next slide. Okay, so especially when you're working with sessions, we want to make sure that the sessions are the real source of truth there, not whatever state is left over between your tests. So the problem that we are seeing is Cypress historically would remove, would scrub some parts of your session, but not comprehensively. Uh, if you want a more detailed look at that, you can look at our docs. But with side out session, um, it's a really, really important to clean up your browser state uh, after each test, uh, especially with session origin. Uh, next. OK, so the default behavior for Cypress 12 and moving forward is test isolation is on. Uh, you can opt out of it, but what test isolation will do is it'll clear the DOM state by visiting a blank page, like Eli was saying. It'll clear all of your cookies. It'll clear local storage and clear session storage for all domains. Next. OK, so talking about best practice. So of course, we have always in our docs suggested that people write tests that are not interdependent. Uh, because that leads to non-deterministic behavior, especially if you know, you're know you used to your tests uh, running in a certain order, and then you run them through CI, it gets parallelized, and now they're all out of order. And if your tests are dependent on a state left behind by a previous test, uh, that could be extremely hard to debug and just makes everything kind of messy. So we always encourage that. And now we just made it the default that it is test isolation is enforced unless you specifically turn it off. Um, and it, it just makes sense, but we're going to also talk about why you might want to opt out of it. Uh, next slide. Well, I don't think we have a next slide on this one. This is, this is it for the opt out oh, that, option. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <not clear. laughs> uh, yeah. So if you need to opt out, there are a couple reasons why you might want to, I think in, 95% of cases, at least, uh, you'll want to use test isolation. But if you have a big existing test suite and it's not designed for test isolation, and it's going to be like a huge lift just to get it into that state, we didn't want to just break everything and say, well, bye. Uh, so you can turn test isolation off. Also, if your application requires a lot of context setup, uh, whether you know, maybe there's a performance issue that you still have to fix, or maybe it's just a lot of stuff that needs setting up. Uh, you know, I've seen uh, applications where it takes two minutes to set up the context for it, and you don't want to have to replicate that setup on every test. Uh, you know, a lot of that hopefully is solved by session, uh, but if there's just other stuff there that you know you can't have scrubbed between each test. Yeah, in that case, you might want to opt out and turn it off. But I think for most folks out there and most test suites, test isolation, just staying with the default state of being on 
is the way to go. Awesome, then. Well, we're about to get to Q&A, uh, but one question that did come up in the chat that is closely related is just uh, for us, uh, at what kind of different levels do you uh, do you have the option for, for opting out? Is it at the test suite, test, like individual tests? Uh, can, you, can you speak to that? I believe um, it's in your config file, but you can also do it on a describe level. Fantastic. All right, and uh, posting in some more links. So relinking the migration guide, I think I shared this at the very beginning of the session, but uh, it does have some more information about test isolation and uh, what to expect for the, the changes there when you migrate to Cypress 12. Uh, and then there is an excellent guide on test isolation um, that our engineers wrote that has a lot more details about like what this is and, and how it will work. So definitely recommend checking those out if you are interested. All right, and that wraps up our planned content. Uh, we'll move right along into Q and A. Um, all right, and I know I might not go exactly in order. I think we have plenty of time for questions, so that's that's all right. Um, but I, I'll start out with some questions directed at Eli. Uh, so this is off topic, but I feel like it comes up all the time. Uh, Eli, what's your camera setup? It's so high quality. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I, I have a mirrorless camera. Uh, it's a Sony a6400 with the Sigma 16 millimeter lens. Um, it is way overkill for a webcam, but I use it to you know record content and have good camera quality for events like this and stuff like that. And I got a couple of Elgato lights to provide lighting for me. Yeah, I feel like Eli setup versus Abram and I setup is like a yeah. like studio level versus a you know laptop camera. Justin and I just have it's... potatoes. We are really <laughs> recording on potatoes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, very high tech potatoes, but uh, Eli's got Eli's got the, the real mm. potatoes. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so, kind of another question about tech. Uh, what's the extension you're using for the demo code snapshot? It's kind of showing like the demo hero in the left. Oh yeah, yeah. So so that. Uh, Demo Hero is a Visual Studio Code extension that I wrote and I plan on publishing someday, but it is not available yet. Um, and the reason why I wrote it is because there, there is a, another extension that does something very similar and it's called Code Snippets. And so if you're looking at something to kind of do the same thing, it's called Code Snippets, I believe. But the reason why I wrote my own is because Code Snippets hasn't been updated in quite a while and I had some other ideas on stuff to do with it. And so I kind of just started working with it and and you know dog fooding it while, while i'm using it to see how it works and all that kind of fun stuff um but yeah i will i will try to get that up into the visual visual studio code extension store soon cool sounds like you've already got some interested potential users which is always a, a great sign so and it is a very nifty tool um all right and then one more question uh for eli about sci origin uh, how do you deal with site origin if you have tests implemented as BDD separate steps? As BDD separate steps. Um, I would probably need to see that a little bit more to have some thoughts right now. I'm not too sure, okay. actually. Okay. So for whoever asked that question, please feel free to throw in any extra context that you, you have in uh, the, the chat or uh, go onto our Discord uh, channel and we will follow up with you after the event if you have like specific questions about your setup. Uh, definitely happy to to help out there. Definitely. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. All right, let's go on to other questions. Um, all right, so I think this one would be for Eli about Sci Origin. Um, how do you handle server side off in? Uh, we are using Next.js Auth0 library in our current project, and Cypress shows pure HTML after logging in. We've tried Cypress Next.js Next Auth0 that is obsolete for Cypress 12. Um, and I know that you're working on some other Auth0 changes, if, if you want to talk about those. Uh, or, or there are other Auth0 kind of like documentation pieces in, in the works, if you want to touch on those as well. Um, yeah, that, that one, I'm not too sure. It's seems pretty specific around some some different libraries and whatnot um 
Yeah. So, so, sorry to not, not be too much of a help there, but if, yeah, if you want to hop into our Discord and um, ask him there, we can take a deeper look. Cool. Yes. Uh, please hop into our Discord. Um, and then the, our engineer who work, who, who built the spec bridge, uh, Bill, he's working on a new Auth0 guide, which includes some examples, and maybe that will help as well. Sounds like a complicated question. So, um, okay. Cool. My like Q and A is jumping around quite a bit, so I think folks are answering questions and then they just kind of go away. Um, let's see. I'll go to answered. We'll do some of these ones, um, which we might have answered uh, like individually, but we'll just answer them live since we have some time. Um, will Psi Origin be in an iframe, or will it run outside of an iframe? Um, so basically what happens underneath the covers is that when you use site.origin, it opens up a new iframe in the um, Cypress test runner to load the new origin. And then it kind of like hides the other one in the background. And then when it exits, it pulls the other one up. So it kind of runs in the same way. Um, if, you're, if your question was more like, hey, does site origin help with um, working with iframes in my own application? Um, I don't believe so. We have work incoming that is to better support um, iframes incoming. Yes, definitely a hot topic. Um, and speaking along those lines, there's another question about support for uh, multi-tab, which I think is, is also on our roadmap, uh, top of mind for the team. Eli, anything else to add about multi-tab there? Um, no. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. A few questions about iframes. We hear you. It's, it's definitely important. Um, do we have a workaround with passwordless login? Passwordless login, like a LESS? Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> probably not, because I think that is starting to come into, like, you need some other type of device or mechanism to complete the login. Like, you get emailed like a magical link or a code to your phone or or something like that. And so if you're using that type of thing in your application, you probably want to look at, at an alternative login mechanism, something like a programmatic login um, to bypass that so you can get into your app and test it. Got it. Got it. Uh, another question about sessions. Can you clear a session via the API? Um, yeah, so there is a... Um, on the Cypress global object, I think it's cypress.session, like dot clear all sessions or something like that. Um, check the session sessions doc and there should, there should be some information about there. All right, sounds good. Just flipping through it. Most questions are about sessions and origin. Uh, yeah, which makes sense, let's see. Will there be improvements to TypeScript support? Are you all familiar um, with the roadmap for that one? Um, no, I, I, I'm not too sure if we have anything. I mean, we're always looking at improving stuff and there'll be improvements every once in a while. But um, if there's any particular issues that you're having with TypeScript, um, let us know either in Discord or open up an issue on GitHub and we'll take a look. But as far as I know, like our TypeScript support is working pretty good. All right, awesome. Uh, this one's maybe a spicier one. How can we use page object uh, page object concept with sci, the sci origin command. Uh, yeah, it's probably diving into a little bit deeper, but basically if your page object is going to have some type of lo login method or something like that, that's where you'll want it to be using sci.origin and sci.session to go along with it so it persists. All right, all right. Um, this one is a question pertaining to sessions, more sessions. Uh, so if the test needs to assert that a user how do I end the session? Um, yeah, so there, there you could use, um, well, you could uh, do it a few different ways. You could either log out of your UI um, through a test or through commands, or you can do the clear all sessions um, um, API that we talked about earlier to programmatically clear out a session. Awesome. Uh... Dark mode for Cypress. <laughs> That's always an interesting question. I know that there are some plugins for it, but it would be nice to have a native version. Um, 
Cyprus is not only a selenium killer, but also a retina killer. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I know we have dark mode for docs, right, Eli? You want to talk about those updates? Uh, yeah, if, uh, in case you didn't notice, uh, the last week we released um, not uh, we released two new websites. We released um, a new Cypress.ro, our main website. Um, check that out. But we also released a new platform to host our docs in. And one of the most exciting new features with that is dark mode support. Awesome. Yeah. And I, I don't know if we have any plans for dark mode for Cypress itself. I would probably keep using the, the plugins for now, but uh, we're, we're, we're getting there. Um, yeah. I, I, I do know it was one of our engineers that created one of the dark mode plugins. And so it, it's definitely on their mind, but as far as like, is it a high priority or not? Like, I don't know if you want to see it, I would say, go, go into GitHub. If there's not already an issue for it, create an issue. If there is an issue, uh, upvote it, give it a thumbs up. Yes, we are definitely paying close attention to all the issues. So oh, as always, if you have any uh, problems or, or product requests, uh, please, please, please engage with us on GitHub. Um, and you can also ask questions over Discord and, and we, we are looking at those. Um, I had a question about the spec bridge. Is the browser closed and launched again between tests in the same specs file and between specs? Is the browser, uh, can you say that one more time? Yeah, is the browser closed and launched again between tests in the same specs file and between specs? Um, so with test isolation, um, the browser is not really closed, um, but the iframe that gets ran in, it's cleared. It's almost like you can kind of think of it as like the browser is like refreshed and brought to like the about blank page. And so that that happens, but it's not closed and relaunched. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, here's a question from Lucas. Do you recommend using the API to log in with sessions or UI? Uh, we recommend using with, with the new site origin, uh, we recommend using UI. Um, just because it's going to use it just like your user would and doing like anything like outside of that, like while it was needed before to get it to work, it's just not how your user uses the app. And so there could be things that pop up um, that could cause issues that you wouldn't expect um, not using the application like your user would. Awesome. Awesome. I had a question about Safari WebKit support coming out of experimental phase. That seems to have a lot of problems right now. Um, I, I was just talking with the team about this. We're, we're aware of the problems and I think figuring out our, our next steps for, for WebKit. So that's a, uh, that's a, that's a fair question, um, but I don't know if we can share anything more specific about the roadmap for that one um, yet either. So, okay, so many questions. Uh, all right. Um, okay. Let's see. How do you change the variables in sessions? For example, log out and log in with a different user. Um, so you would base that based off the, the key that you're using um, for side out sessions. So if you base the key off of like the user's username, um, then when you come in with a different user, it's not going to reuse that session. It's going to create a new session. Got it, got it. Abram, I, I think you just described detached DOM and test isolation so well that there are absolutely no questions on detached DOM or test oh, isolation. No, it's Great job. Rare. Plus <laughs> yeah. using uh, session origin, you know, that's the thing you actually have to like go do something with it. So it makes sense. We have all these questions about the actual ways to implement. That's true. That's true. Which speaking of more, more questions about Cypress origin, uh, how control will be back from new origin to old origin after Sci after the Sci origin command. That makes sense. I guess like, yeah, how to like, how does it know? Like, so yeah. basically when the, the, function that you pass in the site of origin when it exits, Cypress expects you to be at the origin that you were previously. Uh, so you need to do something in that new origin that will redirect you back to your application. Got it. Awesome. Okay. Uh, 
In the future, is Cypress thinking to implement new ways to identify elements, ID, class name, or others? I mean, with the with our current selector API, it's pretty powerful. You can pretty much get it to do whatever you want it to do. Uh, we are having some discussions talking about maybe like implementing some new APIs to kind of follow what we're seeing as best practices emerging for selector selection, um, like hev heavily influenced by uh, testing library. Um, there already is a Cypress testing library plugin uh, that you can use, but we're thinking about pulling some, some of those concepts into the app directly. Um, I, I wouldn't necessarily say that's on our current roadmap, but there have been discussions around it. Um, but that's not like necessarily giving you a new way to select items. It's just giving you um, best, more kind of best practices on how to do so. Amazing, thank you. We'll do this. Uh, just lost it. There we go. How would you handle a case where a session validation check fails because of an error on the back end? Um, so the SciDot session um, has an additional, pro um, I think it's in the options object, but it's called validate. Um, and that is a method that you can run um, to make sure that your session is still um, valid. Like for instance, like if your token happens to expire or something like that, you can call into a backend service be like, hey, is this token still valid before I use it for this test? Um, so you can do validation that way. I hope that answers your question. Cool. Uh, question from Satish. Are you planning any update uh, for reading CSV or Excel file data without using plugins? Uh, no, I haven't heard that being a part of any type of discussion. I think that's probably a good case for something like a plugin. Um, just because something's a plugin doesn't necessarily make it like a, a lower class citizen or anything like that. It's just uh, Cypress is very extensible. And, and so for things that aren't like in the main app that aren't necessarily a use case for the majority of our people, like we definitely recommend um, building or using a plugin to augment that functionality. Definitely. We love our plugins. We love our plugin authors. Um, another question from Tyler. Is there a way apart from clearing all sessions to ensure a spec will go through the login flow? Uh, I mean, you could, if you wanted to go, uh, I, yeah, I would just make sure that you run the, uh, the clear all session API up beforehand if you wanted to do it. So is there a way to do it without that? I don't think so. Not that I can think of offhand. Cool. Hope that helps Tyler and everyone else. I think we've gotten through all the questions and I do apologize if I missed anything, but it, oh, one more. Um, okay. <laughs> I need to test my app for multiple users. I need to log them out at the end of the run. If I log out after my test, the next time I'll use Sci Session, it won't work because I'm not logged in and I'll need to log in again. What would be better using Sci Session and log out all my users in the after in the end to end file or don't use Sci Session and log in and log out every test? Let me read this again one more time to make sure I okay. understand. It's a long one. I would, I would, I would think that using a different session caching key based on the user would help you with your situation here. Um, that way, you don't have to you you don't have to worry about necessarily logging them out if you use a different session key. That session's not going to exist if they haven't logged in yet. Um, if you did, if you did, did need to log them out, I would say either clear the session using the API or log them out via the UI at the end of the test. Um, and said, use site at session log out all my users in the after in the end to end file. Yeah, I would, I would just say like, if you wanted to make sure that the session was gone for the same user to use the API to clear it out. Awesome. Hopefully that helps now. One question, possibly about test isolation, but I think it might still be about origin. <laughs> so are there useful updates, uh, how to handle target? you know, equals blank when Cypress opens origin in the new tab or window. 
Yeah, I think this is going back to being able to support um, multi-tab or multi-windows. And that's something that we're currently working on. Um, I mean, there's there's some workarounds that you can do inside of your own code so that instead of like opening up a new tab, a new window opens up in the existing window. Um, but that is outside of Cypress. And so, yeah, we're still, we're still looking into finding a good solution for that. All right, amazing. And we have a couple minutes left, but I think I'll close it out and maybe we'll just, we'll hang out for a few more minutes if anyone has any further questions. Um, so again, uh, yeah, thank you so much for joining the event. Big thanks to our, our experts for joining and presenting Eli Abram, uh, fantastic presentations and, and uh, so, good to, so good to have you. So uh, if you have any questions that we didn't get to today or your questions are very specific and you need, uh, you need some help, you can go to Discord and we have an I Need Help channel, uh, which is for you. Um, otherwise, we have some different support options, which uh, I'll, I'll leave up on the screen as well. Um, but that closes us up for the event. So thank you so much to everyone. And yeah, great to see everyone. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> yeah, thank you all so much for joining. <laughs>